never, ever give up in life, guys. Me and Brian were almost killed today. Brace yourselves. That is surreal. All right, go away. Oh, let's just bring him on out here. Here's Patton Oswalt. Thank you guys so much for coming out, man. Damn. So, uh, yeah, this is our show. Uh, Comedians of Comedy, and then Comedy Central is going to film it and then show it at 2 in the morning in Guam. It'll be great. It'll be so awesome. What you gonna say? Here's Grandma Oswald's candle warmed tea. <laughs> Gay. The, the phrase not needy, I took that from Conan O'Brien, but my God, it is such a good phrase. Not just for comedy, for everything. I mean, Zach is probably the least needy of all of us. He's, it's, not, it's not so much that he's in his own world, but he's so formed in what he truly, truly thinks is funny. It's almost like a guy that is so comfortable in what he's doing that it naturally draws people in. Uh, I'll translate that for you. I think that translate to Zach is not really interested in entertaining the audience. <laughs> At what age do you tell a highway it was adopted? <laughs> I think around seven, because they start thinking, I don't look like the Kiwanis Club. And Maria is like a Martian doing racist jokes about Earthlings. She is so in her own sphere. You can't take him away from me. Want a bet, bitch? Whore? Mine. I love those. I love those makeover shows for the home decorated show. They get really mean though now, huh? They'll come in and be like. Do you like the new wall covering in the bathroom? Does it feel familiar? It's your baby's skin. And then Brian is the most harshly judgmental of himself and the least judgmental of the outside world. I mean, how can you be sad when you have basset hounds around? They're doing all the sad for you. Because even when their life is awesome, <laughs> they look like it sucks. I went through a lot of bad things when I was ki a kid and then, uh, you know, losing people and uh, moving and being made fun of. And I mean, part of why what I do is an answer to that, you know, part of being a stand up is like, come on, forget about it. You know, just be a jackass. I have a, I have a cute wife and it's weird because people see us together and go, how'd he get her? Which isn't a nice thing to say to somebody at their engagement party. <laughs> I know. I just can't wait till we're both in our 80s because you never look at an old couple that have been together forever. You never look at two 80 year olds and go, how do you get her? <laughs> he must have a huge old. This, this is actually your servant? This is my. Um... <laughs> So, uh, I want to open a cross-dressing store and call it Susan B. Anthony. What do you say? Just laugh. And call it Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Alyssa. Oh, that's my middle name. <laughs> that's my new sitcom that I'm going to pitch to Comedy Central. It's like, can you believe I said it? There's something uh, funny about awkwardness, but it's great to watch um, people struggle on stage. And uh, like, I like to do it too. Because it's the challenge is to get yourself out of it too. Huh? I said what? I said dyslexic. He's dyslexic, he read it backwards. Who's dyslexic? Einstein. Yeah, I know. I, what the f does that have to do with the joke? Oh my God.
Thanks for the that that's it's helpful, but like random trivia about a joke I've already written doesn't really help me. You know what I mean? Einstein played violin. I, I don't know how that helps a joke. He had nine pairs of shoes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Like, I'm more of a person where, like, I need to rehearse it. Yeah. So I don't know, but I would like to be more of that kind of comedian, like, connecting with the moment mm -hmm. and with the audience. So I'm getting old. I just went to my uh, 20th reunion. And the, uh, the weird th they did this weird thing. If anybody's gone to the reunion, uh, you're going to bag me up. They, they did this thing where they gave out awards uh, halfway through for different things. Like, they gave this one guy for coming the furthest. No. <laughs> Flying the furthest. <laughs> that would be weird. That was another contest out in the parking lot. Where... I hope my feeling of self-importance doesn't go through the roof after this. Across the room is the Jerry Lewis life mask. Mockingly looking at me. But I'm stuck or don't feel like going on. Wanna go inside? Come on. You know, I'm not my hair. <laughs> That's, uh... That's one of my affirmations. Reality shows are more unreal than scripted shows. This is not a reality show because we actually show real things happening. These people, even when they're being boring and not being forced to jump through hoops of fire or choose a spouse or do these fake challenges, can be 10 times more interesting than that. <laughs> Albert, I'm trying to figure out how to high five online. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I get really excited about going on the road um, to kind of cover up the depression and frustration of it. You know, you, you're leaving the place you're comfortable with, you're leaving the people you love and you like to hang out with. You're going to hang out with, with more friends, but you're, you know, you're doing it in a strange hotel room and in airports. Hello. I love you. Oh, it's our manager. <laughs> You're gonna wanna go. I actually love you more than Brian loves his wife. I just wanted to get that on camera. Hey! Yeah. You couldn't possibly know how oh, much. No, I didn't. What? That's so nice. I did! <laughs> okay. I watered it. Bye. When I say I watered it, it means I peed on her this morning when she asked me to. Um, I got, I got little journals for everybody for the new jokes for the tour. They're jacket journals where you can put a coat on your journal. I try to have as, as much patriotic stuff as I can because of my beard I don't, on a plane. I'm sweet, like candy. Maria found my wrestling nickname, God's Girl. This has been a very f***ed up year too. It's been good, but it's been f***ed up for me. Like, just big in big ways and personally like I got engaged uh, last year which is it's nice the women always cheer for that first too They're like, yay because being engaged is great for you guys because you get a ring and we don't get anything and I know that you're going but you get love and devotion for listen if I give you a big ring I should get a helmet or a sword or something you should have to make me a sword make me a sword you with two hammers just bing bang bam make me a sword <laughs> that way when people are like hey man are you still seeing that girl still seeing her check out the sword man I got a, that's a broad sword they had a dragon head on that she made this my journal my journal 72605 i'm already sick of these ass this is going to be a long trip 9 30 i'm hungry 10.45. My dinner was delicious. The CPK in D.C. is the best I've ever been to. <laughs> I love my country. I mean, it's because I'm white and rich. Uh, things have uh, things been really working on for me. I'm not technically rich, but I do have a lot of <laughs> that I don't need that I refuse to share with others, and that feels solid. Am I right? Do you like skateboarding, Brian? I did, but, uh, 
I broke my back years ago, so I don't do oh, wow. anything anymore. Did so you that totally, spinal... did that totally change your personality? Oh, yeah. Were, like thinking of, oh, okay. Well, I got serious about stand-up, and I, I moved back to my mom's, and then I moved to San Francisco, and that's like where I really got serious. I'm on a very limited schedule. I have to go to the uh, Lincoln Memorial, which I didn't, I read today, I didn't know it was a scratch and sniff. And, uh... Remember when Carson used to do Lincoln jokes and it never would go over well in the crowd? Do you ever remember that? He would always do a Lincoln jokes. And the crowd wouldn't laugh and he'd be too, he always would go too soon. He's the he was so funny when he was not getting laughs. He was the best. Oh, he was great. I gotta stop crying while I watch The View. <laughs> And it has nothing to do with the subject matter. It's, I just feel so sorry for that couch. They started building in 1914 to 1922. So it took eight years? Eight years. Yeah, wow. Can I have one of those? Sure. Thank you. Do you know where the Wheezy Jefferson Memorial is? We're going to make one of these for Iraq someday, but we don't know who's gonna be sitting in the seat because somebody's gonna be idolized as freeing somebody. We don't know who it's gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be you. Yeah, you can do it. Look at Abraham, look at he was tall and gangly and he, he was insecure and his wife had was mentally ill. He had a lot of things going against him. Look what he did. He made a huge change that he wasn't even sure if he wanted to make that change, but he did it. Let's do it, America. You go for it, man. You're blowing my mind. You are blowing my mind. Do not read the whole comic in the store. Ryan and I went and got comic books today, and um, it's really, there's nothing more. Um, Nothing is more... What do we get today? Well, I got... Uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's just pretty, pretty exciting. Um, I got uh, Albion 2, which was uh, plotted by Alan Moore, but written by Leah Moore. And, uh, of course, OMAC Project, which is uh, issue four. And, uh, uh, P. Um, what comics you get? Let me see your list. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. You don't have a list? I never do. Whoa! I just I see what's new, and then what's what's new, and I'm reading. I buy. Yeah, but don't you have like a list to remind you of like what not to miss? But you don't miss stuff. No. There's a lot of sexual tension between those two. I heard Pat knock on Brian's door, and then I heard Brian open the door, and he said, "Did you bring the shampoo?" Hey. hey. We go swimming. Then there was some noises that I don't really know how to explain, but it sounded like two guys that were nude together getting their hands on the first edition of Batman while taking a shower. What comes out today? Well, let me check my list. See, I like to be surprised. See, Pat. let me check my list. You prick. Because I'm, you know what? I'm surprised when I open the cover and I read it. Yeah. That's what. That's my surprise. It'd be so funny if this documentary, like when I'm alone, is just to talk about them all the time, just cut back and forth. You know Maria's a kleptomaniac, right? It's another radio station. Here we go. Radio is such a forced camaraderie. It's so fake that it really makes me nervous. What's he like? He's like a nice guy who's funny. I don't know what... Again, a, 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 that's a non-question. No, it's, it's not, I don't hate doing radio. It's just, uh, it's just hard to, you gotta understand, it's hard to answer that question. I can't answer, they're like, what's, what's Jerry Seinfeld like? I, I don't know, he's like, a, he's a nice guy who's like really funny. No, no, but like, what, what's he like? He's like, like an ass No, no, he's like a, a nice guy who's really funny. Okay, well, Pat, uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, right. Click, and they hung up. If you'd rather pass one of these off, it seems like you're, uh, you've had it. I just, I don't know what the to say to these guys. Get the gauge from a little Sorry. meeting, then we'll take. I was just away. talking to those guys. What's up, buddy? You are. Yeah, um, That's him. I work for Baltimore, DC. Oh. He's just despised, top to bottom, low end performers, headliners. The dude is just a dick. Why? <laughs> Why do they hate him so much? He just he, he belittles everyone else's comedy. He. 
don't know. If you're not him, you're not a comedian. You're not like, just, he's not hey, a man. Like, he's from around here, from what I understand. He's born in Portsmouth, Virginia. I was going to get to that, but we were getting absolutely nothing out of him, and his phone sucked, so we had to let him go. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Uh, talk to you guys, drive I think we're going to call those guys back. I got to call them back. Hey! Oh, man. Well, we got off the camper, and there was a truck stopped at a red light, and you guys were tearing me apart. And that's so much more fun. And I was like, wow, these guys deserve a call back. That was great. You know what I mean? Oh, invincible trains. They have them. They should just go. So, uh... He, Brian goes, go back in and get all these trade paperbacks of this comic called Invincible. And he makes me buy the first four. And then in the camper, we're talking, and he goes, yeah, so that's issues one through 18 collected. And we both start going through the minutia of all this bull****. And it really hit me, as much of an atheist as I am, I really have an innate respect for people that are, like, religious. You know, because, really, is there any difference between a guy that's going, are you having sex out of wedlock? Well, maybe you should read Leviticus uh, 21.7, uh, which states, how is that any different from me going, when did Wolverine join Alpha Flight? No, no, that's the wrong issue. It's, excuse me, it's, it, no, because, no, I know you're saying, but there's an earlier flashback one, and he, there's no, it's just, people building their lives around imaginary no that's not old that came out today 21 came out yeah how did i miss that i love that the fact that the guy with the list the guy with the list misses, misses out on right, things shut the up i already thought it and you had to make sure it gets on film and i go in and just fly I by the seat in, of my pants and find <laughs> ragtag bunches who knows man Man, I got into a huge fight with a Baltimore station today, earlier this afternoon. Mm -hmm. By the way, Chet says hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not a show. This is an event. Stuff is going to happen on this stage that's not going to happen in other cities or other nights. That's what I wanted the tour to be. Uh, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? 18. 18, really? Yes. Listen to this? <laughs> I like to hang out in front of 7-Eleven and buy miners beer. <laughs> Under one condition, I can hang out with them. Uh, the tour is the Comedians of Comedy. Where are you guys going to be next? We'll be tonight at the Wrecker Auditorium in Towson, Maryland. Ah, so they have a little driving to do. And our wonderful traffic. Hasn't it gotten better, Patton? Uh, uh, uh. When we were um, coming up, uh, before the storm hit, we just weren't moving on 495, just sitting there. Just four lanes of traffic stopped and four lanes of traffic the other way stopped. And I wanted to just take a big picture of, of the traffic and then make it into a billboard and just put keep abortion legal on top of the <laughs> picture. Just like. Brian and I are huge fans of riding the bus with my sister. We think oh my God. that is the best comedy ever made. The rosy Reality, 90% of it is boring and uh, frustrating, but that can be fascinating to watch that. Corey, uh, what do you do for a living? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> what is it good for? Absolutely. Yeah, the war. What it... Are you ready to go? <laughs> there you are! No, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. These are all my friends, so it's me and my friends having to deal with not only getting to do really fun shows for 12 days on the road, but also finding ways to alleviate all the boredom and tediousness in between it. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you, what do what you, what kind of acting? Shut up! Shut the f up! I'm doing it, trying to establish some sort of rhythm here. Do you know how hard it is to talk to a skateboarding loser? A lot of times, he'll say, you get, go over after a show and a guy will say, you know what that? You know, I mean, you're pretty funny, but there are not that many funny women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm starting to think of what I get done on a makeover show if I get anything done. And uh, I don't know, check this out. I don't know if you can see it. But I think I get the part of my, I don't know if it's back here, the part of my brain removed that cares about what other people think <laughs> and then replace my hands with suction cups. <laughs> And maybe it isn't that there aren't that many funny women, as that they were outnumbered by the glut of accountants with a Chris Rock impersonation and an irrational sense of confidence.
Oh, this is great. Okay, 10 minutes ago, it wasn't raining. Yeah, literally. Now it's pouring. And by the way, uh, I'm, I am extremely happy to be here tonight because me and Brian were almost killed today by the earth that huge thunderstorm happened and we literally and this was like a bad 80s movie a power line went down in front of us in front of the rv and our insane driver was like i'm just driving through we're like i, I don't think that's the boom and then we just went brace yourselves Hold on, wait i can't Oh my god. <laughs> and then we took it with us, like it didn't just snap, it kept going and we were like yanking it all down and then finally it snapped and like went off into the highway and probably, you know, killed a cop or something. And like literally two minutes later the driver's going, That's traffic light troll out, what the f we're like because we just destroyed the power grid. That's why there's no traffic lights. Oh, oh we just ripped a big hole in this. Can we close this? Taking water. Yeah, we're, we're taking, taking water. Taking water. <laughs> I love you, and you're fired. Experience their lives on the road from the comfort of your couch. What is happening? <laughs> I'm not even gonna get into this. <laughs> oh mercy. I got nothing. The comedians of comedy. New episode next Friday at 11.